Hi, I'm Claudia Rappa. I'm here with Luz talking about DIY girls at, um, you know, the beautiful Silicon Beach area. We are excited to learn all about Luz's projects and the things that she's doing. Welcome. Oh, thank you. Tell us a little bit about the DIY project and yourself. Sure. Well, DIY Girls um, is a nonprofit organization here in Los Angeles mm -hmm. that works to get more women and girls interested in technology, engineering, and just making their own products. Mm -hmm. um, I started it three years ago, and my background is engineering. I studied at electrical engineering, um, and then I transitioned into STEM education about ten years ago. Uh, so I've been working in this field, and uh, so a lot of what DIY Girls is are based on my experiences and um, my interests that right. I, and, and what I've seen that women and girls want to do. And I think a lot of times they want to make something that's real and, you know, and share it with people in their lives. Now, a lot of the projects that the girls are doing, primarily technical or do they um, range? It ranges, but primarily focused around technology and engineering. Um, but for example, um, we start off the programs with the girls um, doing electronics. Uh -huh. um, so they they create something with, and then along the way they're learning basic electronics. But we also use different types of materials. For example, we have conductive paint. So the girls are painting circuits. Oh my goodness! Um, so they're also integrating art into their projects, but oh at the God. same time, you know, are still learning the technical concepts behind, um, you know, electronics or basic circuits. Um, we've done things with e-textiles where we use conductive thread uh, to sew things, so they're making wearable technology, too. Oh my goodness. Wow. Um, so it's integrating also arts and textiles and crafts sure. in, in with technology. Um, we also, of course, do, you know, the girls learn how to program and code, um, but they're making, a, they, for example, they've made games, they've, um, you know, tried to, you know, things like that, where they make their mm -hmm. own video games, and they also make controllers to go along with that. Yeah. Um, so they're, they use, um, you know, different types of materials to also control their own games. And so what does this do for the girls when they're in that in that place of creating and that mindset? Um, what we've seen is it makes them a lot more confident. The girls, we, the majority of girls we work with are about 10 or 11 years old. They're in fifth grade. It's their last year of elementary school, so they're about to transition to middle school. And they, I think what they need is confidence and, you know, to enter middle school. Um, but besides confidence, they're also... Um, I think they're they're also learning teamwork and, and to not give up mm -hmm. and that's what they would say um, we just recently talked to our girls at the end of the year and said what did you get out of this program and one of them said I learned to work on a team you know, because in elementary school you don't really do team projects and they learn also to keep um, working on a project even though they get frustrated that it doesn't work because everything they make the it's like the assessment is built in to the project because it's something real that has to work so it either works or it doesn't yeah. most of the things they make yeah so they they get frustrated if it's taking them too long you know to build and it's not working but we have time you know we, we see them you know two or three times a week over the school year so there's a lot of time and yeah. not everyone um, works at the same pace and we we welcome that we're not like okay this is this project is over time to move on it's like when you're done then you'll move on to the next project that's great too because it teaches them endurance for their future yes endeavors yes because yeah? usually they're used to in, in in the classroom they do a worksheet or and it's over by the end of the class period mm -hmm. and that's it mm -hmm. and for us it's like no it's over until you're done with it and that's something very new for them yeah in you know in their education sure um, so they're not used to that so they feel oh I was supposed to be done last week and I'm like okay then then continue mm -hmm. and I think that's one of the things they get out of it through these technical projects that's awesome that they really do learn that that level that piece of just seeing it through yes yeah, yeah. 
yeah. and I think that's very important mm-hmm. at this age where that's they're going to need to do that when they enter middle school and high school absolutely and um, in other things and other areas in their lives too right not yeah, just of course focused on technology and, or engineering and and we're hoping that that this experience you know, gives them like an intense foundation to already um, that where they can face any challenges in, in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, and Lucy, you said you had a background in um, engineering and such. I understand you went to MIT. Yes. yes. And how did that help your efforts today and the things that you're doing? You know, I think it helped because you know I I grew up here in Los Angeles. I, you know, I just happened to apply to MIT, you know, someone recommended that I apply, um, and when I went, you know, it was just very foreign to me, you know, it's just Boston, even though we're in the same country, it's just such a different um, environment and culture, and I think that really helped me realize that that experience alone um, helps you kind of develop, you know, to a young person. Did you find you were like one of the only women involved in these programs and these studies? Um, when I went to MIT, MIT was about a third women. So this is in the early 90s. Yeah. Uh, and then my major, I studied electrical engineering. Um, it was probably a, maybe 20% women. Yeah. So within my major, I did feel it. Our major, you know, there were large lectures, and you'd look around, and there's not that many women. Sure. And then we'd have smaller sections mm-hmm. um, for the course, and then even less, you know, because they have to split us all up right. into these sections. Right. And so there's usually about two to three women, you know, in a, in a section of 30. Goodness. Uh, so, I mean, you do feel it, but uh, I, I really liked that area, you know, it was within the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science, uh-huh. and I knew I wanted to do one of those, and, you know, it's just, I really based uh, my choices on my interests, and I think that's been um, something I bring to our program, is I, I want to get the girls interested in something, whatever it is for them. It's not necessarily they have to do computer science or or choose. Um, in the future, I feel that careers are going to be interdisciplinary, and we don't know what they are yet. Right. But if they develop, if the young girls develop interests early on in a variety of things, yeah. Then you know, when, by the time they're choosing a career or or going to college, then you know they'll have lots of skills and have developed those interests. And DIY girls also, it, there is a, a, a section for women. Yeah, it's become a large group. There's over 600 members in the meetup oh, group. Oh my goodness. And it's, it's, I like to call it hands-on networking. Yeah. Right? We don't have mixers or like, you know, happy hours or, right. you know, go to brunch together. But we, we meet around yeah. doing something hands-on and learning a new skill. That's fabulous. Um, and so, you know, the women do develop relationships within the group. You know, they meet each other, but it's because they, they have similar interests and are learning something together. That's fabulous. And how often do you guys meet? Once a month. Oh, once a month. Okay. Um, it just depends. Uh, we arrange it with a place. So now what's happening, um, I'm getting contacted mm-hmm. by people that want to teach something. Yeah. You know, like I just met with someone last night that wants to teach app development to a group of women. Um, we're, in July, we're doing one on um, wearable technology and we have a company that's sponsoring it and providing the kits um, for the women you know to develop and so it's like a a place where you can come and learn just for a few hours Mm -hmm. and what happens is sometimes the women realize oh I'm interested in this and then they continue in that field or that er content area Wonderful. Um, or they're looking to maybe upgrade their skills to get a new job. You know, they, they're interested in technology in some form, or they they already have, they're in a field where they want to integrate some of this. Like if they're an artist or graphic designer, um, they're looking just to learn about more technical areas. Um, and we view, I've used it um, 
to also learn myself uh -huh. and and bring in new content to the programs for young girls. Okay, right. so it kind of bleeds into yes. then what you're doing with the girls. So instead of me taking classes on my own, sure, or you know, or even now I have some part-time staff, I could send them to these meetups, and it's an area that we're exploring. And when I'm at the meetup, I'm like, okay, how can I do this with young girls? Okay. You know, sometimes we don't have the, all the equipment. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking, how can I modify this to bring this content into the program? It's a little repurposing there yeah. with it. That's so great. It's, for me, it's like, that's the reason I'm there. And also, of course, the women, you know, we do want to serve women. But it, it does connect, right, very to our, our programs are very connected. And then some of the women in the pro, in the meetup group end up volunteering for with us to serve young girls. So we're able to offer them, you know, they can learn by being part of DIY Girls, yeah. and they can also mentor by being part of it. And you don't have to do both, or when you're ready. Mm -hmm. That's so, so great. Uh, it's not required or anything. You know, it's, it's, and how rewarding for the women too, right? Yes. To be able to. Because sometimes I think as a as a woman, as an adult, you're at a place where you're looking to learn mm -hmm. something and you're not ready to be a mentor. Yeah. Maybe a time in your life where you're not ready to be a mentor or you can't because you, because of certain circumstances. But then a year later, you're like, you know, I, I want to help you yeah. and I want to mentor girls. Or we get people that help us with curriculum development because they don't have time to go and, and mentor girls during the school day. Sure. Um, but they help me in so many different areas or even professional areas. Like someone's helping me um, on marketing, you know, marketing the organization yeah. and graphic yes. design, you know, skills where I don't have much experience in. It's so great. it's very helpful. It's really great. Yeah. So great. So challenges. What challenges have you faced, Luce, with the, the organization so far? Um, I think the biggest challenge is that there's so much demand. And, and this is a good one, right? People are very interested in either bringing programs to schools to serve young girls uh -huh. or more workshops for women. Right. And even nationally, you know, I get contacted by women in other cities, I want to start this. So I think the challenge is, is then, okay, having the resources to scale. Right. 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 And we're getting there, yeah. you know, but it does take time. It does take time. You know, but I think the challenge is that people want it today. Yeah. You know, like I get contacted by schools all over this region, like, we want an after school program, we're ready. You know, and, and how does funding work for that? Do they help you with that? Piece? So it's a combination. Yeah. Um, most of our funding comes from foundations. You know, we apply for grants um, yeah. for a specific program. Sure. But this year, we've brought in a lot of earned income, which means that we provided a service and someone paid it. Right. Either the school. So there was one school that was able to pay partially for uh -huh. the program and so it covered the expenses um, and so we were able to provide the program or also by offering workshops you know on the weekends so sure. where you know we do some of the same projects that we do with girls but then people come and pay for it just for a two-hour course okay fabulous, fabulous. and so now what keeps you motivated throughout the whole process what keeps me motivated I think just when I see the impact that our programs make on either young girls or women, and they tell me, I, I mean, I'm very fortunate that they do tell me, um, you know, how, how much they enjoy being a part of this program, and, or especially when they have a story of because of this, something else, something happened in their lives. You know, either they got a new job, or they got connected to someone, or the young girls, too, you know, they realize. They're more, they're more motivated in school. Um, they want to um, pursue something technology-related, sure. and they tell me. Yeah. And they say it's because of this program. That's so great. And so that keeps me motivated. Yeah. And so what advice would you give to, you know, the parents of a young girl that are, you know, they're looking to get their daughter involved in this world, don't quite know where to start, how to, I mean, granted it's through the schools, but what about outside of the schools? Is there any way to really get your daughter or even yourself integrated? See, I think that, and this is why I started the Meetup Group for Women first, because I think young girls need to see women in their lives um, interested 
and learning a new skill. Yeah. You know, so a lot of the women that I meet, they didn't study engineering or computer science and don't have any technology background. They're just very interested in learning. And I think if you know you have a girl, you know, a young girl in your life, whether it's your daughter or niece, you know, learn together. Yeah. And I think it's okay to tell girls that you don't know how to do it. That we're gonna try to figure this out together. Yeah. Um, and and I think that's what you know, because a lot of women that I also contact me, they want me to go and teach their daughter something or, or someone in our group, yeah. and we can't do that. But I always tell them, why don't you do it? And they're like, well, I'm not an engineer. Or I didn't go to MIT, and you don't have to. You don't have to have that background that's to so learn. Great. You know, there's so many resources now, especially online, yeah. um, workshops, and different places all over that you sure. can go and learn together. Absolutely. And I think that's being a role model to a young girl. Is that Very you're, they know they see someone learning in their lives? Yeah, and it gives them that inspiration. Absolutely. Well, fabulous. Now, um, any advice for as far as starting up a group like this or doing these yeah. types of outreach efforts? You know, I think I started it with you know recruiting a group of women, mm -hmm. and because at the time that was easier for me mm -hmm. and. And I think you just have to do it. Just, even if it starts small, you know, it, it, it'll, and once, I think word of mouth, you know, really helps. So yeah. with the meetup, finally just started it, just said, we're meeting here, if you're interested in this, come. And I thought, oh, no one's gonna come. You you know, it is kind yeah. of scary, you know, there's gonna be one person. I'm like, okay, if two people show up, I think it's success. Yeah, success. absolutely. And we had about 20 people show up. Wow. And then from there, you know, it's just once a month. Now people are waiting. For it. Like and is it when's the next one? Just in one area, or do you move around? Move around for the so the women's group. It's just yeah. you know we move around. Yeah. Um, but with the after school program, I started it at my elementary school. And what I did, I just went and approached the principal, and there was a teacher there that I knew that introduced me to the principal, and it was just a conversation. And yeah. and I said, you know, I asked. You know, can I have a closet to store materials? Mm -hmm. And they were like, why don't you just take the classroom? We have empty classrooms. Oh my gosh. So I think people are willing to help you. Yeah. You know, you don't have to have a lot of money to get started. Yeah. You just have to have the idea yeah. and just just start off small. And just work. Out. Yeah, and just work. And, and then once you get started and people hear of you, more resources will come to you. Very great, very great. Well, thank you so much for okay. sharing your story. Sure. I'm Patty Ratha here with Luce and DIY Girls. I'm just really excited about her project. Thanks so much for joining us.